We bought this cedar chest from a neighbor for $75. I love updating cedar chests and this one is no exception. I think it's my favorite cedar chest makeover yet. All right, first things first, we remove the lock from the cedar chest. Then my husband cleaned it with crud cutter to remove any grease, oils, or grime from the surface. Then I filled in a few small dings on the top of the cedar chest with some wood filler and let it dry. The top had quite a few scratches in it, so my husband sanded it down to bare wood once the wood filler was dry. Even though most of the scratches were light, I knew that if we didn't do anything about them, we would still see them in the end. He used 100 grit sandpaper to get most of the finish off and then used 150 grit and ended with 220 grit sandpaper to end with a smooth surface. Then he sanded the rest of the cedar chest with 220 grit sandpaper and a fine grit foam sponge for the curved edges. This step is called scuff sanding and it helps the paint adhere to the finished wood. See how it looks all foggy now without any sheen? That's what we want it to look like. He cleaned up all of the dust, which there honestly was very little of because this sander was hooked to the shop vac and this sander has some suction of its own to keep the dust down. It's pretty awesome. We moved it into our paint booth and he taped off the edges for me so I didn't get any paint inside. We wanted to use a lighter color for this makeover so I rolled on some white tinted bin shellac base primer. It's the best primer for painting furniture, especially when painting furniture a lighter color. It blocks stains from coming through all of the paint and it helps the paint stick really, really well. I used to hate rolling this primer on because I don't like roller texture, but when I use this specific roller, I don't get as much texture, so I love that. On the top where Taylor sanded down to bare wood, I made sure to push the primer into the wood grain and fill it in so I didn't have a bunch of dark spots all over the top. I rolled on two coats and let it dry overnight. And then Taylor sanded the primer by hand with fine grit sandpaper and a sanding sponge to smooth out any texture that was left behind by the roller. We didn't wanna use the sander for this part because we wanted most of the primer to stay. The sanders are so powerful that even on their lowest setting, they sand too much primer off. Then he cleaned up the dust. This time, there was a lot more dust to clean up. Has anyone noticed that he's been doing a lot of the prep work for me lately? He's awesome. Anyways, while he was working on that, I was working on the fun part. I used these redesigned decor molds and casting resin to create flowers and leaves to decorate the cedar chest with. I was a little bit nervous about this part since it was my first time, but it was actually really easy. Just mix two equal parts of resin together and pour it into the mold slowly. Within 15 minutes, a batch of flowers and stems were done and I popped them out to make more. I think I made like five or six batches and just went through a little more than one package of casting resin. I also had maybe a handful or two of the flowers and stuff left over. Then I laid them out how I thought I might want them to go. The ones that were fresh could bend around the corner of the cedar chest, so that was cool. I used my favorite instant super glue to glue everything in place. So I put the glue on the piece and then sprayed the activator on the cedar chest. And then I quickly stuck it into place and within seconds, the glue was dry. Honestly, I studied a few other makeovers from other people to learn how to place these to look more natural. That was the part that I struggled with the most. But I basically started with the largest pieces, making the leaves touch the flowers in the grooves and then have more leaves touching the flower on the other side and going in a different direction. It feels weird when working with each individual piece to put it all together, but once it was all together and I stepped back, it all came together and looked so good. After they were all glued in place, I brushed and rolled on the paint. This time I used this gorgeous light gray called Seagull Gray from General Finishes Milk Paint. I love General Finishes Milk Paint because it levels out really well so you aren't left with brush marks or roller marks everywhere. It dries hard and honestly, and probably doesn't really need a top coat because it's pretty durable. I let it dry for an hour or two between coats of paint. And when the second coat of paint was dry, I saw in better light that there was some glue that made some bad texture in between the flowers. 
and check out how I still didn't have full coverage on the paint after two coats. This paint was at full strength too. I did not add any water this time. So I sanded off the texture and painted two more coats to get full coverage everywhere. We finished up by spraying some water-based polyurethane on to protect it all because I wouldn't be surprised if whoever buys this will sit on it and I wanna make sure that the top is as durable as possible. So here's what it looked like before and here's what it looks like now. I absolutely love this makeover. I was so nervous about the placement of the flowers, but I think it looks so good now. I love the light gray to lighten it up and it just looks so cute. And that paint, it looks so good, brushed and rolled on. I honestly didn't notice any brush or roller texture and that's saying something. What do you think of the new look? Let me know in the comments. Have you used these decor molds or have you seen them? Would you try them? Let me know. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more of our videos. Want to turn your hobby into cash? Click the link in my comments to download the free pricing guide that we use to buy and sell furniture.